You probably heard the news that our boy Terry is suing Gwyneth Paltrow for 400k, which sort of jogged our memories to the stuff that that monster, absolute monster, did to me and Daniel last time we were on the slopes. It was 2017, and Ryan and I were on the bunny hill when I could just feel Gwyneth Paltrow skiing up behind me, at which point suddenly she pulls out one of those extendable batons and kneecaps me Tanya Harding style before yelling, this is Paltrow country, and then she spat on me. She did spit on him. It was about 400k worth of spit if you ask me i can barely podcast anymore uh, can't, uh, can't, i don't know uh. she also looked at me and yelled this is paltrow country and then spit on me but i walked over to daniel i said are you okay at which point she started kicking me and then she jumped on the top ropes that were available and then did a people's elbow to me and then when i was lying on the ground she said cold play is the best band in the world you talk smack about them you got hell to pay and i said i don't even know what you're talking about i guess she was with chris martin at the time and she goes yeah i got everything bugged i hear everything nothing gets by paltrow and then she goes yellow's the best song in the world and you're gonna learn to love it and then at that point she pulled down her pants and started peeing on the ground and smushing my face oh. in the pee and then she said you better like yellow now oh that's awful and that wasn't even our only encounter with Gwyneth Paltrow I wish it was me too when Ryan and I were hiking in 2018 we saw her dumping a batch of oil in the ravine and then I looked up and it's Gwyneth Paltrow I couldn't believe it but then I knew I had screwed up and then bam the extendable baton comes out again <laughs> and then she looked up at me and she said well if it isn't Jew boy and piss face and she grabbed a bucket of oil and dumped it on me and then she pulled down her pants and started pissing again which gave me PTSD while she screamed at the top of her lungs black and yellow black and yellow and then she yelled out hey Freeman I think Jew boy wants to turn Morgan Freeman was there too we all also think he owes us about 400k yes morgan freeman was there and then for some reason he took his shirt off he dipped it into the water and then he started snapping us locker room style it was it was absolutely horrible and then he yelled out lordy lordy look who's morgan which didn't even make sense but it's why i remember that's it. correct it didn't even make sense but i put those locker room slaps to daniel at about a hundred thousand dollars a pop and i thought maybe i got off easy this time until morgan pulled down his pants and then they both had their their pants down and they started crossing streams pissing on top of me and then Gwyneth Paltrow was taking her thumb and putting it to create a hose effect and as I was sitting there I thought I was gonna drown and they grabbed hands in the top of their lungs they yelled Harvey Weinstein will never die and if that wasn't enough I then feel the pain of a punch to the back of my neck and I turned around and it was Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller was also there. He owes us about 400 grand. He These also monsters owes need us to be 400,000, yes. They're just monsters. And also, did you know that Gwyneth Paltrow didn't actually gain weight for Shallow House? She just wore a fat suit. The boys. The lads. The dudes. The Boys Cast has officially hit 2,000 patrons. Uh, you may generally make a noise. They can't, well, they can't I'm hear so him. happy you, that I can't You can't see, he's pumping, noise. You, he's pumping his pumping fist. pumping my fist. He's a happy camper, but you can't really see him. I was actually the opposite of happy. You sort of changed my personality as an Uber driver. I just smack him. I go, do you know who I am? He goes, why are you smacking me? I go, I got 2,000 patrons. I got 2,000 patrons, dude. I go, excuse me, the man with 2,000 patrons <laughs> is walking onto the subway. Yeah, just give him a frig. Just give him a little friggin' something, something. <laughs> a little tuner. I go, excuse me, um, and when I'm ordering my grape poupon, uh, <laughs> do you have a grape poupon discount for the 2,000 patrons? Uh, <laughs> bug men don't eat grape poupon, right? Excuse me, where's the 2,000 patrons is... section? Well, that is the most important part of it. Sure. So with the bug man versus bug man, the documentary, we're hiring a full TV bug crew. Bug man versus bug man. Bug man versus bug man <laughs> will be happening. And I'm going to film. I'm gone on tour for a week, and then we're coming back, and we're filming that that whole week. And I will be on tour. Las Vegas this weekend, Atlanta, Philadelphia, Tampa, New York. Yeah, yeah. San Diego got added, too. 
just came back from Boston. Most tickets sold. It was like, and I hung out with the Be a Man guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy's funny. I love that. <laughs> he doesn't like to tell you his name either. He likes to go by the big Be a Man. <laughs> really? Even- <laughs> he won't even just like hanging out with you in person? It's like, I- <laughs> it's like kayfabe or it didn't, whatever? Honestly, didn't really come up, but I had a group chat with him and some other people. And I was like, hey, I don't know whose numbers is this. And he goes, this is Be a Man. Like, <laughs> I, I think he likes going by be a man he's the best by the way yeah he's a, he's a good dude oh he's like like just completely rocking out just like boston like god he used to sell insurance and like at 64 years old he started doing this channel on tiktok and it like blew up and it's just like a few of them Crazy. doing this operation it's like <laughs> yeah he's sick. super funny dude he must be like a legend in boston like he's such like, a legend like everybody knows him there he must be like tom brady status like it kind of was that because we went to eat dinner and everyone's asking for his photos like pretty <laughs> pretty top tier stuff out in boston yeah his money's no good there that's yeah, for sure. yeah, I bet, I bet, like yeah, I, yeah. I you know when he goes to the buffets and stuff like that his money's definitely no good <laughs> the buffets is that you guys hit a buffet <laughs> we no i'm saying he would he's doing all this cool like basically <laughs> Basically, like, you know, as stand-ups, we're basically, you know, you take uh, your act on the road and do stand-up. He's essentially, like, judging strip club competitions in Boston. Oh, sick. Like, <laughs> if you go to his page, the things he's promoting right now is just, like, he's the guest judge at, like, some fucking strip club during the day. He's just Hell got all yeah, these, like, dude. wacky things he's doing. He's fucking living life. He actually is really living life. And he had a normal life before this as, like, an insurance salesman. <laughs> Crazy. Listen to the boys. It's never too late. Yeah, man. It really isn't too late these days. There's a there's a pretty good like plethora of like old ladies that are like famous TikTok stars right now. Yeah, I mean, there's all there was all that one dude who was like that gay dude who died recently, but who just blew up. What gay dude? Uh, I can't remember his name, but he was like that effeminate old gay guy. Well, that's who was, narrowing it down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was on that. He was on some show. He was on like had like a bit part on a show, and then uh, people know who I'm talking about. And Do you think they're banning TikTok? Su- no, Is I don't it? think I don't. I feel like when push comes to shove, are they gonna like literally? If you live in America, you can't download TikTok. Doesn't think so either. Seems but like the guy did sort of yeah. bomb the meeting. You know what I mean? Like, there's two parts about the. So I watched the basically the uh, some of the highlights of the two of them talking. Yeah. When the all the, the there's two funny parts. One is this guy clearly like the. The Chinese government tells him what to do, and he can't admit every, it. Well, yeah, every Chinese government. So they'll does. be like, the, yeah, exactly, right? So they'll be like, okay, so before you get here, when you're doing this hearing, have you consulted with the Chinese government? And he's very like, did I consult with the... <laughs> I mean, I guess... Uh, which one's that? Which one's... By <laughs> government. <laughs> he's very like... And they're like, are, are you right now... Uh, have a, Do you have a phone call? Is your phone on in your pocket right now, and you're talking to Xi Jinping? And he goes... I, I mean, there's a that's a pretty common name yeah, in China. Uh, Is there like a could be a different <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. He has a whole lot of that kind of stuff. This is, but there is the other things where. And this happens all the time whenever the senators have to grill the social media guys. They don't know what they're talking oh, they about. Have, no, they're like, the, <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, it's literally you're like grandpa, and they're like, I got a question for the, the for the man about. Exactly. It's like, if you need to use, can I get it on my BlackBerry? And they're like, you have a BlackBerry? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the buttons. And they go, yeah. So uh, when I'm on my Facebook app and you're showing people stuff, sometimes as they accidentally get shown bad stuff, and they're like, <laughs> yeah, I guess sometimes people, but they go, well, that's not good, right? Uh, guys, we can probably agree that's not that one right there. That We just got them, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's the right. right yeah. He goes, how about... Uh, I can't seem to turn the ringer off on my phone. <laughs> How do you explain just like, that? Yeah, you know, do you, are you able to help me with that? Goes, Sir, I'm the CEO of TikTok. I am not your grandson. <laughs> okay, Mark Zuckerberg, explain to me why I was supposed to be uh, <laughs> I was supposed to be sending a prostitute a, me- a <laughs> private message, and it showed up on my main feed. Yeah, Ex- riddle me that, explain Mark Zuckerberg. Explain to me why I constantly hit forward all on every email. <laughs> One guy is just like he's not even that. He just goes, "All right, Mark Zuckerberg, I got a question for you. May I approach the bench?" And he shows this girl. He goes. This girl sent me freaking that she wants to meet up with me. Got four followers, <laughs> yeah. Chinese girl. And she goes, what's the deal? And then she just stopped responding. Do you know her? Can you like bump her? Like why? why what's their deal? <laughs> so I got one clip of this from the best part of one of those guys. It was just like clearly doesn't know what he's talking about. We do not collect body, face or voice data to identify our users. I find that hard to believe. It's our understanding that they're looking at the eyes. How do you determine what age they are then? 
Um, we rely on age gating as our key age assurance. Age gating, which is when you ask the user what age they are. We have also developed some tools where we look at their public profile um, to go through the videos that they post to see whether... Well, that's creepy. Tell me more about that. It that's is public. Creepy. So if you post a video that you choose <laughs> that video to go public, that's how you get people to see your video. We look at those. I just like that part where he was like, he goes, okay, well, how about uh, this? How do you figure that? He goes, oh, we asked them, and then we look at the thing. He goes, that one's that's pretty crappy, right? We don't like that. <laughs> that's creepy. Sort of got what, him about, what about all these dances that these adults are doing? That's creepy, right? Are y'all yeah. doing that? <laughs> because every one of these senators is just trying to get their viral moment, you know what I mean? But like, the, none of them know what they're talking about, but. So the Gwyneth Paltrow thing, which I've been doing like sort yeah, you've of been loving dive. it. Well, okay. Th so the first thing I didn't even know the extent until you really told me. I thought it's the most insane thing that's ever happened. The fact that this is even televised, I get they set. I guess they set the precedent with like the Johnny Depp thing, where it's like it is sort of like a public flogging that you have to be like a famous person and have to like basically sit there on trial yeah. and get like grilled. Because no, no other point in their life, if you're like us Hollywood celebrities, anyone telling you anything how do you, ever, how, right? How, how do you get like the, hey, can I just get like the bad artist to just release the photos, you know? I, I don't know. I really don't know why every trial gets on, like a literally, it's going to be, you know, you have uh, Jack Black. He's like someone suing him because he, you know, accidentally jaywalked, and this guy's got to like stand trial now. Yeah, I, I mean, guess you could have settled out of court. This is a, well, this is America, though. And a lot of people in this uh, on the thing just hate celebrities so much, so they're very, you know, screw Paltrow. Why won't she just pay him the money? Kind of. Well, but thing, she's right? got all the, her her goop crew. All the goopers. And what's her goop crew? That, that's her company or whatever. Goop or whatever, where they oh, put from the weird stupid, stuff up their vagina. Yeah, she has the dumbest ass stuff. Candles man. that smell like shit and stuff. Paltrow's uh, always known to be wacky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this guy is like, the, I, I'd love to have been on his side, but it's, he, the, this guy's the best. He's the biggest scam artist in the history of of scam artists. Yeah. Like, you have to hand it to this guy from the start, right? So big part is... Uh, it was seven or eight years ago, right? And a huge part of his trial is he's like, you know, and I can't even ski anymore. He's 75, though, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, you know, I used to be able to ski, but I, could, I can't even ski anymore. And he goes, you know, I, I can't volunteer. He goes, he had this volunteer job where he would, like, transport garbage. Okay. And then they go, he can't do it anymore. And he's like, what? He's like, no one's mentioned. He's like, well, you're also 75 you're also now, 75. Right? He's One of his things I saw, this is the one thing, was he's like, I can't uh, do wine tastings anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he, his, in his mind, He's like, I'm just a completely different guy. I can't do anything. <laughs> he started saying he's like, my wife, he basically has like a, uh, he had to break up with his wife because, and he goes, one of the reasons he had to break up with her is because she didn't believe that he was as wacky. So she kept being like, why are you being so weird? And she didn't believe that it's all because of his crash. <laughs> so he basically goes, I could, he goes, <laughs> he goes. I couldn't give my wife what I wanted, so I had to tell her to leave. And then he has three different girlfriends, too, where he goes, you know, and then I had a new girlfriend after that, and she kept coming in and be like, why is your personality so different? And, you know, sometimes you're happy, sometimes you're mad, and you're not treating me very well, so that was Paltrow's <laughs> fault, too. He has like, What's he saying? He had, like, some sort of head injury? <laughs> kind of, yeah. yeah. But a lot of it is, like, he, he has another, he has a third girlfriend where he goes, I had this other girlfriend that me and her were sort of hitting it off, and then, you know, I was talking to her, and after a few days of talking to her, she just sort of stopped uh, stopped accepting my calls. So, probably Paltrow. Really. <laughs> <laughs> like basically anything that happens. Oh, he goes anything. like he's like my uh, my bathtub <laughs> got clogged. Every That's single day. So. There's also fun parts where the technical difficulties in the thing, like, because it's, it's it really reeks of like a crappy thing. And here's a pretty funny thing: someone sent me a photo of someone uh, while they're watching the live trial. One of the comments that had a lot of likes was, "This leap seems like uh, uh, the." Judge Bro Brown, uh, oh, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> the court, <laughs> basically, funny. the person puts on the. They're going, oh, we're gonna put on the. We're going to put on this video and then like they, the remote doesn't work and then they go, okay. And then they're dicking around. They have like three people sort of around the TV <laughs> trying to put the room, trying to get this video playing. And they go, okay, we'll just move on from that, I guess. Yeah, that's the nitty gritty of actual court. Trials, it was, the, yeah, so. the nitty gritty of them not being able to get that. Yeah, everybody video thinks up. it's like a Hollywood production and then they're just like, yeah. Does anybody know how to get the VCR? To it work? is very different than lawyers in movies where yeah, the guy yeah, comes yeah, up and he goes, this man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, and tell me, you know, like, yeah. yeah. It's more like there's a red, a green, and a blue cable. <laughs> blue cable? I That's don't know. a huge What's part of what for? it was. <laughs> and they're all, all the lawyers have to sort of work together for it. <laughs>
he, he, he changes his mind right and left, right? So, you know, basically it was seven years ago and a huge part of it, he goes, I remember every detail, right? But it's like his I whole- he had a head trauma. But his, his whole <laughs> premise is he knows exactly what happened and, and this is how long I was unconscious for. He remembers it like it was yesterday, but his whole premise is his brain doesn't work good, right? <laughs> So like inherently the whole thing is kind of since flawed then. because he's like because it's been since that time right so Gwyneth the Paltrow is kind of like my yeah, head works fine and this is what happened and this guy's like my my head actually doesn't work fine because of you but uh, when we're talking about that day it works really fine I honestly I, I know it's like I, I totally get her where she's coming from if she's like this is total bullshit and all this stuff but you're like for if you're saying it's four hundred grand that's all he wants you're like fuck man. Seems like he, he's just going to just end up paying that in legal costs just out of principle. Uh, well, I would do it too, though. I'm, I would have. I, I would, yeah, I would like, go down with the ship. I mean, you're getting shaken principle. down. It's you're like, getting shaken down, which is like happens in America all the time. And I totally, yeah, yeah that would suck. Like, just and then a huge famous. part of their thing is he's like kind of a small guy. He's five five, yeah. and then they keep painting Gwyneth Paltrow as like this giant. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, I saw that <laughs> that one video goes, and he goes, "What did she say? Five five, like max or something?" He goes, yeah. "In your, he's five five, like tops or whatever." Oh, right? Yeah, yeah. But the whole so a big part of their deal is that. Gwyneth Paltrow is like this giant freak of nature <laughs> and this guy is this tiny this. <laughs> so they keep they keep drilling down like the lady the female lawyer is just like you're a big ass fucking girl right and then so but the thing is then it comes out later that that he lost like 150 pounds so the whole time their whole premise is like how small he is yeah. but because it was seven years ago they put a photo up of him seven years ago he looks like fucking Buck and Chuck <laughs> dude this guy <laughs> So he was actually way heavier. Oh, than her. he was like a monster. So she would have bounced off of him back then. Oh, she would have to... bounced off him back then. Even so... though she's saying that he hit her. <laughs> I mean, by the way, if that <laughs> is true, like, I mean, I'm sure this happens all the time, but like, if that's true, that like, she, where her account where he goes, yeah, he came up behind me and ran into me, and then he's just like, I'm suing her. I know. <laughs> Like it lot. probably happens on the ski hill like nonstop. Yeah, people right? will like collide or whatever. I mean, accidents happen. <laughs> and then he's talking about being on the wrong path, and the the reason it comes out after they're just like, so you know, because apparently she was she uh, he was skiing on the wrong path when they collided or whatever, right? And then one of the things they were like, why were you on that other path? And he was like. Well, because of my eye, and then it comes out he's blind in one eye. <laughs> They're like, "Wait, what? You're blind?" And he was like, "Yes, I'm blind in one eye." What, what does that have to do with anything, right? It's like all this stuff. And he goes, he says that since he got hit by Gwyneth Paltrow, he lost his ability to find north. And he also uses the Dane Cook thing where he goes, "I can't completely explain it," but he goes, "There's just something wrong with my essence." Oh, so that's a big part of it, and it's not age related. Uh, it's not age related. Yeah, I got some of the good clips, but that. Oh, one other funny thing is that his lawyer just they cross examine him and they give him these softball questions, like to just sort of paint him as like a guy that wouldn't lie, I guess. And they're just like, "So do you love your daughters?" And he goes, "I really do love your daughters." She kind of looks at the audience like, mm. like <laughs> "Loves his daughter." Like, yeah. has not even. Re they're like relevance. He's like, "I'm getting to it," and yeah. they're like, "And you consider yourself like a good man? You care for animals?" He goes, "Love animals." And looks again at the jury. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Seems like open and shut case. Just pay them the money, Paltrow. <laughs> so a big part of it <clears throat> is he at the beginning. What do you think? That's a month of fucking alimony from Chris Martin. Uh, that's exactly right. But that's probably what he thinks. But again, I, I definitely am with Paltrow here. Just like the fact that she's famous. Like I'm sure if it was any regular person, there'd be no. Loss I'd here. love to be on the other guy's side, which I am, but for the other reasons, I'm on his side because it's just like the the ultimate schemer. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. But so he wrote an email to his family like after he hit her in the crash saying, I'm famous. You know what I mean? Ugh. So this is the infamous email that they keep saying to me like, uh, you know, you're saying you're not going for clout or whatever, but you wrote an email bragging to all your friends that you're famous, right? Why? Just because you bumped into <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow on the... Like, well, because it was covered by the news. <laughs> oh, this was in the news at the time. So this is... Uh, this was is, there an ambulance involved? There, I think there might have been or something okay. like that. Yeah. But then this, this was covered by the news that there was this big car crash. And then he's sending everyone who will listen like I'm famous. And then when they grilled him about that, this is what he has to say. Do you recall saying uh, that you agreed that saying I'm famous <laughs> was a crazy thing to say? Agree? Absolutely. It's not me. It's, I'm, don't buy into that. But it was you, right? Just to right. be clear. <laughs> he starts and goes... He, when, when you said is famous, that was a strange thing to do, right? And he goes, I don't buy into that. <laughs> Absolutely. They go, wasn't me. And he goes, 
But it was you, though, right? <laughs> and he goes, well. For me, it, it was, in fact, you. It's the other personality that's inhabiting my body right now. Oh, so he's doing the Hulk, the Hulk defense. Because that wasn't me. Hulk. <laughs> he goes, since the crash, he's got this other guy. His Tulpa. Since the crash, is this other guy that's been living in his brain doing all sorts of wacky stuff, right? Terry Sanderson. <laughs> Solid name. That's a great name. So since the crash, he goes, he's got this other guy living in his brain that's doing all sorts of that's wacky being stuff. Like I'm famous now. So yeah. it's, it's actually, he was, and is he saying that that person was already already there and was just like rattled loose? No, he he got created after the crash because oh. of Gwyneth Paltrow. So this is what he says. And you blame Gwyneth Paltrow for that? Yes. No question. <laughs> he goes, and you blame Gwyneth Paltrow for that? He goes, yes. No huh? question. This is so, like, obviously frivolous. It's so crazy. It's, it's the just, best I trial mean, in the like, world. Yeah, it's just like the what the U.S., the American fucking ju- legal system Okay, is. ready for the, what? Because <laughs> one of the things that happens is they're trying to build this case that Gwyneth Paltrow is very accident prone. Right? I know, I saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So this is, and Gwyneth Paltrow, this isn't some one-time pop for Gwyneth Paltrow. And she's saying, like, well, he, he ran into me. And then it's like, well, explain. If, if, if you ran into you and you're not some accident-prone person, explain to us this. Went on Jimmy Kimmel saying, yes, I am accident-prone. I am always <laughs> running into things. Which is, which is, I'm a moron, which is very relevant to this case. How? She's, how? Yeah. Because we believe that that's exactly what she did, is she ran into things like she always does. <laughs> right on Jimmy Kimmel and she had an anecdote about Yeah, an anecdote about being like clumsy and now it's y- being used against her in a trial. <laughs> did you not go on Jimmy Kimmel and say that you're accident prone? You said you're a moron. Is that not correct? <laughs> so are you or are you not? Were you lying then or were you lying now? <laughs> You said on Jimmy Kimmel that you're 5'10", a behemoth gargoyle, <laughs> and then you fell down the stairs. That, was that the? Am I to believe that was the only time in your entire life that you've ever experienced an accident? <laughs> is that what you to believe, gargoyle Gwyneth? So that's another one. Oh, this is what a fucking waste of her time. I guess she's not really doing No, she probably is pretty busy. This must stay. Oh, she's got a lot of time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, that is taking up a lot of her time. So this is the other thing, is the the girl, right? So the daughter comes in, and the the whole family's in on the scheme, right? Because they all think they're getting a little piece of the action, Oh, for sure, they're getting a payday. So their whole family comes on, and they're like, Dad was a rocket scientist. He was, you know, there's nothing Dad couldn't do now. He just lies on the floor, (laughs) and then it's Gwyneth Paltrow's fault, right? So this is the daughter. They're asking uh, what kind of guy he was before the accident. She's describing his physicality. By the way, at this point, he was 63. 60, yeah, or even older. What was your dad like physically growing up? Did you ever notice him to be deficient in any way? My dad could do anything. In fact, he tried doing a backflip on the trampoline after I had shown him how I could do a backflip. It didn't turn out so well, but he could do almost anything except for a backflip. <laughs> Is that not the best I mean, he could do almost anything except for a backflip and not get hit by Gwyneth Paltrow, apparently. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't able to do that. But she goes, he could do, my dad could do anything. In fact, even one time he tried a backflip. Well, he could, it didn't work out. But, <laughs> either, <laughs> but other than that, that's other the one that, thing he could not do. <laughs> like, why bring up the backflip to say that my dad could do anything? Even one time he tried a backflip and he couldn't do that. But other than that one time, everything he's ever tried to do, he's been able to do. Nailed it. And then, and then they start grilling her more on this backflip and they go, so when was that? And she goes, oh, I was in grade two. So so the time that, so she even brings up a backflip he couldn't do when he was 28. Yeah. And she is in and, 1980. <laughs> Literally in 1980, it says. So the daughter, she probably went. And then they're like, they're probably like, what year was that? And she's like, I don't see how that's relevant, but uh I, I don't know, 45 years ago? Yeah, that's exactly what it was. So she went back to the bathroom and just started punching the stall. You know what I mean? She's like, you fucking idiot. She looked herself in the mirror. I bet you that dad went friggin' postal yeah, on her she, that uh, night. As, yeah. as she's walking by, he's like, you just fucking cost me 400 grand. Well, because they go, they go, tell him, tell me how great this man is and how much he could accomplish and how physical he goes. In 1980, he tried a backflip. How'd that go? Didn't work. <laughs> this whole thing is bizarre to me, too, because I'm like, normally these lawsuits are... They sue for four hundred million. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like <laughs> it's 
not even that crazy. <laughs> I know it is a surprisingly low amount. All right, ready for this defense for this uh, prosecution? Yeah. This is what they're making. So. I, I don't. You probably. I don't know if you saw this clip, but I don't even know if you'd be able to guess what connection they're trying to make here. This is probably one of my favorite ones. Are you good I, friends with Taylor Swift? No, you're not good friends with Taylor Swift. I would not say we're good friends. We are friendly. I take my kids. I've taken my kids to one of her concerts before, but we don't talk very often. You've never given Miss Swift personal, um, intimate gifts for Christmas. Uh, relevance or relevance. Like okay, guess take a guess why they're trying to pin in that she's friends with Taylor Swift. Ah, uh, because of a skiing thing. I don't know. <laughs> Taylor Swift. Is one time sued? she got sued, and she countersued someone for a dollar, which is what Gwyneth Paltrow think is doing. Okay, so they're trying to paint this picture that Gwyneth Paltrow has some conspiracy with Taylor Swift, and that's why they're countersuing. So she's saying, like, she's saying that. Taylor Swift countersued this person and won. So when Gwyneth Paltrow got hit in the skiing accident, or when Gwyneth Paltrow skied into this guy, she called Taylor Swift and he's like, we're both guilty. Right. And you got out of it. So <laughs> I don't I'm going to try and get it. out of it. And that's that's the connection they're trying to make is that she's <laughs> scheming with Taylor Swift to try to get out of this by copying Taylor Swift's defense. You know what stinks the most about this that I didn't realize? Is that she has to go to Utah to deal with this shit. <laughs> right? Like, because it was in Park City or whatever. Like, so she has to go back to Utah to deal with all this fucking nonsense <laughs> all the time like she's just like yeah i gotta eat utah for two days it's gonna cost fucking... her some cash yeah for sure and it's like yeah it says he's only he's suing for yeah 400 grand it's not there's a principle obviously this is, she's just like fuck this like i'm not i think so yeah. yeah but here's okay the guy this is just a small little something something the guy's name last name's harris okay uh, but this is how you pronounce it last name is pronounced like harris with a lisp it's harris harris <laughs> what the hell? Just say Harith. Yeah, but your name is Harris, but it's spelled Harith. Why, but why is it pronounced Harith if it's an S? Well, no, I think it's spelled Harith. And she's just like, because people get confused. She goes, what's your last name? She goes, okay. oh, it's Harith. And they go, do you have a lisp? Is your okay. name Harris? Fine, that one wasn't that good, but I've got two more. <laughs> It's still crazy. Fine. I'm like, Harris no, but like, how, you think that her whole life she goes, my last name's Harris, and then they go, did you suddenly get a lisp just when you're All saying right. your last name? <laughs> I'm telling you, this daughter's been fucking up the things the whole time. <laughs> so this is the daughter. Now she's trying to say that uh, this dad's very good at things, right? So she stay. They ask her if she's staying with her dad, and this is what she says: Are you staying with your dad? Literally, like last night, tonight. He is running a VRBO. Yes, and I am staying with him. He's got great reviews, five star reviews. Are are you saying he personally or the place you're renting? Um, I'm just I'm trying to be funny and uh, it's not coming across as no, being funny. No I'm staying with my dad. He's letting me stay there. No problem. Okay. What? All right. The GoPro email. We're getting sick of what looking at it, so I'm not going to pull yes, it up. Yes, you're right. So. But. Uh, your understanding after talking to your dad was... Wait, can I just make it clear that that whole VRBO thing, five-star reviews, that was all just a joke, but yes. I'm under <laughs> he's not actually doing that, so I just wanted to... I was just, just trying to bring a little humor to an otherwise <laughs> tense situation here in the court. That, that was, was just a joke. What a bomb, eh? Oh, huge. I, didn't, I don't even get it. They're like... What's... Oh, she goes, yeah, she goes, you're staying with your dad? You go, yeah, I'm staying with my dad. He's running an Airbnb. It's like... Is he? Uh, no, I'm trying to be funny. And then the guy goes, all right. And then she goes, okay, can I, we just backtrack here? <laughs> yeah. I just want to go on the record. Because she knows there's like a record on this. <laughs> they're going to read it back. And she goes, and I'm staying with my dad. He's in his VRBO. Weird that she chose VRBO over Airbnb. It's so kind of. weird. Yeah, yeah. That, is, that was the most that's weird that's thing. <laughs> is, 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 is Verbo making a move on Airbnb? And then this is his witness, his star witness, who's been like caught changing his story like 45 times, right? So Terry and his witness... Because they're all like, oh, he was unconscious for 10 minutes. And, the, and then also, Terry, they find out that he was in like a chat group. And in the chat group, he's been like, uh, he was st basically stalking her. <laughs> like yes, afterwards, he has a chat group where he goes in and he talks about her. And he goes, oh, look at her. Gwyneth Paltrow. Now she's on another ski trip. And he's like, and they're like, how do you know that? And he goes, I talked to the hotel staff. So he's like stalking her, finding out what she's up to and stuff like that. He's got all this stuff. And then... Uh, the lawyer Does he just want to be friends. The lawyer screwed up at one point. She goes to Gwyneth Paltrow. She goes, 
she goes, you're, uh, how tall are you? She goes, you're sort of tiny, right? And then she goes, oh, I mean, uh, but you're not that tiny because she realized she screwed up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She calls her tiny because they're like sort of flirting almost, the lawyers and her. And she goes, you know, on Gwyneth Paltrow, you're sort of like a small person. You're tiny. And then she goes, yeah, I guess. She goes, I mean, I mean uh, well, you're not that tiny because she forgot that her whole thing was that Gwyneth Paltrow was a big ogre. defense. <laughs> and this is, so this is the guy that's uh, Terry's. The best part is right that if she man. wins this, he, he's gonna lose like two hundred grand probably because you know she has the best lawyers. No, because uh, she's only suing. No, for she's a suing dollar. for look a dollar and legal fees. Oh, and legal fees. So it's, it's gonna be like uh, this is gonna Terry. Terry might get, be screwed. Terry's getting fucked here. Terry might be getting tuned up here. <laughs> yeah, Terry's getting screwed. Well, this is the last thing I'll do. It's basically so t- t- Terry's star witness. <laughs> and then I'm like Terry, let's stop. And so so he ends up pulling over to to the right side. And then I came came uh, next to him, and I was I was like, Terry, um, I didn't say Terry. I, I said, Do you know your name? And he and he goes, Terry. <laughs> and I'm like, This isn't good. How, how, how long did it take him to get the name out? I'll try to say four or five seconds. Okay. And so and so then. I said, do you know where you are? And he just shook his head and just like, no. So this guy's changed his story like 8,000 times, yeah. you know what I mean? But they go, <laughs> they go, hey, Terry. I, I looked, this is this is Terry's accomplice who was with him at the time. And he goes, I was with him. And I looked down and I go, Terry, do you know your name? And he looked at me and he goes, yeah. Terry. But yeah, you see, he had to change his story because I looked at him. I go, Terry. I mean, uh, I didn't say Terry. I said, do you know your name? And he goes, Terry. 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 <laughs> Terry. But this guy basically when he was when he was talking to the cops today they all did the report. They've all changed their story nine times since they did the report, right? And so, then I don't think it's looking good for Terry. The internet sleuths found their chat room on the internet, by the way. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the chat room's been coming back to haunt them. What chat room? They were like a like a skiing chat room or something? Like Yeah, they have some like chat forum? room with all these people, yeah. But this the sluice found it and has been coming back to haunt them. But either way, I recommend checking out one of those live streams because it's real top tier content. <laughs> I'm gonna take a quick second here to tell the fellas about Babbel. If you don't already know, Babbel is a language learning app and you only need ten minutes to complete a lesson. So It's all about new experiences, travel experiences, new jobs, picking up new skills. And there's no better way to prepare for life than learning a new language with Babbel. It is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. And thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized lessons, you can feel confident no matter where the next part of your life takes you. With Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson, so you can start having real-life conversations in a new language in as little as three weeks. Other language apps use AI for the lesson plans, but Babbel's lessons were created by 150 language experts. These are experts, folks. They're voiced by real native speakers, not computers. Their teaching methods have been scientifically proven to be effective, and with Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages. Plus... Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and your accent, so they're none the wiser. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee, so if you want to give it a try, pop on over. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel, and right now, in addition to the fact we got a 20-day money-back guarantee, right now you can get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash boyscast. That's babbel.com slash boyscast for up to 55% off your new subscription. Babbel, language for life. And next, we got to tell you about AG1 by Athletic Greens. This is something I do literally Every day. Every day. Every day. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health. You want increased energy, immune system support, and maybe you hate taking pills and vitamins. And you want a supplement that actually takes great. So this is something that you can insert into your morning routine and you won't stop. You'll do it every day. I find personally that it's hard to keep up with supplement routines. They come with a bunch of different products. It's hard to know when to start and which ones to trust. So AG1 makes that so much easier. It's easy peasy, folks. 
Why take a bunch of different things when you can mix one scoop of powder and water once a day? It's the healthiest thing that you can do in under a minute. The all-in-one formula makes it easy for me to cover my nutritional bases every day. Every scoop is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, whole foods, sourced ingredients of the highest quality that give me major benefits like gut and mood support, boosted energy, and even healthier looking skin, hair, and nails. Come on. You're looking for an easier way to take supplements. This is the best way to put it into your routine and not think about it again. Athletic Greens has also given you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs. You know I personally love the travel packs with your first purchase. So go to athleticgreens.com slash boyscast. That's athleticgreens.com slash boyscast and check it out. So, lots been happening in the news. (laughs) What in the news? This is probably my favorite one. So basically... um, in in uh, you know how like this always comes out that like Thailand and China like they don't places like that and most of the world's not huge on like you being three hundred pounds overweight or whatever. I mean, it's like they just it's not even huge. Like I was speaking as someone who's been there, it's like they just don't have people that size. Exactly. Like right? I remember like trying to go in. Uh, it was either in China or or Thailand. Like one of these two people, and like I wanted to go buy because they have all the knockoff shoes and all the knockoff. And I was like, I wanted to go buy a pair of shoes, and they're like, You're yeah. gonna buy some knockoff Jordans? Oh hell yeah, I do. I I bought tons of knockoff stuff. <laughs> really? Fuck yeah, that's why you go there. It's like I, I bought all these shirts are like two dollars and stuff. You're I bought knockoff with two Birkins. <laughs> no, but I bought these knockoff. The one thing I bought, I remember that I was like, I bought these knockoff golf clubs, and then I shipped them back to Canada. I was like, these are so sick. But the problem is, they look good, but then they're like, they're just like not weighted properly. Yeah, obviously. So they're just like, but they look. But I did buy these knockoff uh, tennis rackets, which were great. But uh, no, but they just don't have like nobody's a size twelve shoe there. Exactly. Like it doesn't exist. Like. I have. I ordered this off of. Remember, you used to like buy stuff, you know, from China, like clothes or whatever. And then I bought this sweater, and I literally bought the biggest they sold. It was like a triple XL, and it was just like a large, tiny, yeah. It's just like a large. Yeah, you know? most of the world doesn't have just like a nonstop fat people, and they definitely don't have fat people. Like, well, their fat people are just like you know, they're regular chubby. here. Yeah, they're chubby. They're not like they don't have like the. You're a monster over there, dude. I literally, when I was in China, like uh, other probably people have had similar experiences. Ooh. <laughs> no, I had there was one time when I was in China Daddy, Daddy, when I was in China where I was walking and uh this these like Chinese people were like, "Hey, can we get a photo? Can you take a or they're like, "Can you take a photo?" And I, yeah. and I thought they wanted me to take a photo of them. And they literally were like, "No, we want a photo with you." They're just so big. Yeah, they're just like, "We just want a photo with a person." So they can show like people, the, like, "Look at this freak." Yeah, f- look at this psycho freak. That Even though saw. Yao Ming is from China, which is like, but we, that's so rare. But they're rare. Yeah, yeah, they're like the Mongols. Or so, but they have plus size clothing stores there for tourists. But they tried to give them uh, <laughs> fat names, like here. <laughs> Yeah. I always like the big and tall and there was, there was one called Browns in Toronto and it was for like men that are under five feet and we'd always tell Jarek like <laughs> we'd, we'd always take pictures of him saying his store was there and stuff. <laughs> they, they had the full Browns. I didn't know Browns was the short man's store. Browns is the really small man's store, right? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then the big and tall is funny always too, right? But the, the names of this clothing store, like some of the, so basically some girls went there and they're in China being like, Look at this fat phobia that's going on here. You know what I mean? They're not happy about it. And this is them trying to be nice, but one of them is called Fat Girls. Yep. And it's in English. And the other one's called Moo Moo. (laughs) But like, like a cow. And the other same, this, uh, and then some of these people are, it seems like bullying. One of them's called uh, BB Fat, Fat Girls, Fatty Fat Girl. <laughs> fatty Fat Girl. There's a girl. literal store in China called Fatty Fat Girl. This is, this is all in Thailand. Can you imagine, Thailand, can you imagine getting your girlfriend something from Fatty Fat Girl? Yeah, Fat fat <laughs> Girls, it says XL to 5XL. But the thing is, if you look at the photo of who's shopping they're there, not, you're they're all normal not people. Not that fat. No, they're just like not skinny, tiny Thai That's people. what I mean, though. Imagine you're bringing by your girl was something from fatty fat girls and she's too small she's too big for it yeah and literally she's like 140 pounds and the other one the best one here is so the store this is probably the coupe de gras but love <laughs> calories it's called love, love calories. <laughs> they have a store called thailand has a store called love calories for fat people <laughs> thai fat and fat cat fat cat's funnier Love calories. That's just legitimately you go like a Danny going to a store and it's just called, Hey, you gonna pick up some shirts at two dinners? <laughs> <laughs> See the thing is too, some of these like cause 
like my first instinct. I love I, oh, a Danny. I love a calories. <laughs> I don't think it's the case. Rough calories, but a lot of times it's, they, rough it's, it's translation problems. Well, where they'll be like, "This is what this means in Thai," and then they'll ask someone to translate it. But I don't even think this is that. How could I do, you, yeah. Well, sometimes you would see these crazy translations where you go like, "What the fuck?" And I think it's just like, more acceptable there because yeah. what would it, what would have translated to "fatty fat girl"? That's what I'm saying. I, I think they're like that's just like a funny English like name for a thing. I don't think they're like oh plus size like big and tall store in Thai translated to English is is <laughs> fatty fat girl. Yeah. <laughs> Can't stop eating. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You go there, it's like full stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Danny's getting his new show. Oh, yeah, just got to pick up a couple uh, pair of slacks that kicked out a buffet. <laughs> 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 dot love, com love calories <laughs> love calories love calories is, <laughs> love calories is large consumer dude great oh great, it's great, super great, funny great country but there's a there's another thing related so i've clumped together a couple of funny body positivity things but so basically there's this girl she wrote this article i've never asked to be the face of body positivity movement <laughs> So she started posting on TikTok and this girl, she's like an actress and she just started posting like videos of her putting on clothes or whatever, but yeah. she's like a little bigger or whatever. And then it, it was kind of like that thing with, uh, what's her name? The, uh, then we posted that clip of, uh, the Selena Gomez or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this girl's, she just basically posts photos of her like wearing clothes and stuff like that. And every now and then she'll be like, oh, this one's a little tight for me because, but she's not saying like. I'm like, she, I'm not, she wasn't even like, I'm a mom. She's just being sort of like self depreciative and being like, ah, you know, I put on a couple pounds here and there. But because of that, she became like a hero to the fat community. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, so anyone that's like has a TikTok channel that's fat becomes like their fat community, right? So everyone's reposting stuff. What a world stuff. we live in now. It's such a world we live in, right? And she's like, honestly, like kind of a pleasant person just posting. And then she's basically, uh, then other people start like posting being like, no, this is not good. You being this fat. And she was like, so she's getting like flack yeah. because you know how, so basically the TikTok people are being like, this is what beautiful looks like. And then other people are like, no, it's not. So she has like people. And being, she's not even plus size enough. Like it's like, that's another problem yes. she's having is that she's like, I'm not fat. Like the really <laughs> fat people are like, oh, you're skinny. Like, oh, cute that you think you're a plus size model. <laughs> yes. And then, the, and then like the skinny people are like, you think you're like a regular <laughs> model? Are you kidding? She's like in this purgatory. She's like, <laughs> honestly, like I either need to like lose 200 pounds or gain 200 pounds. <laughs> this is legitimately what she was kind of thinking. She was like, do I just have to get fatter? Because the fat community is like, you call that fat? Yeah. <laughs> like this person not, does not represent us. This is like a, uh, basically, it's, what do they call it when like, uh, uh, someone's like not black enough or whatever. You know what I mean? Like you're the you're like the light skin of the yeah yeah. She's kind of yeah yeah. For sure. And then the best part is she's like, the, the trouble she's getting into is she's like, but I'm starting to have some like health issues. I'm starting to think this is maybe like this body positivity. Like she's like, I have a condition. Like basically she's like, I can't, like I binge eat or whatever. And like, I have like mental problems. That's another thing. Right. She's like, people get mad. And about. then she goes, and I'm starting to have all these health issues. And people are like, stop saying you're having health issues. Yeah. She's like, but I am. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I don't think this is good. I'm like, I need to do something about this. And they're like, stop saying that. <laughs> that, was, that was one of the other things is that she said that she talked about being like depressed and she's not happy with her body. And then the fat people were like, yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. You're a fucking beautiful queen. And she goes, I have really high blood pressure for a 27 year old woman. Right. And they go, and the, yeah. So the fat community normal. is basically being like, stop saying that you're not perfect. You yeah. know what I mean? So they're yelling at her because she's been saying like, no, I actually don't love being fat. And they're like, you do though. Mm -hmm. You have to. And then on, then on top of that, there's the other things where it's like, everyone's posting how she's fat. And then, so people are coming and being like, Oh yeah, this is beautiful. Yeah. Nice try. And she's See, like, stop yelling at me. I didn't say that this is like part of like, I, this is, a, I go so back and forth with the banning of TikTok stuff. Cause like, you know, TikTok does like they admitted, they literally have like a go viral button. Like they totally, like they said they don't. And then they basically came out and admitted that they could just go to a post or a person. I and hate be like, it. Go viral. Well, I, I'm saying, but they've they given me the reverse of that button. They put, put, put on me the don't go viral button, even yeah. though I have like tons of followers. Yeah. They, they, yeah. You got the, uh, dude, I like, I mean, I made a new fucking TikTok account. It has 20 followers on it and it gets as many views as my other one that has like over 
over ten thousand. Yeah, I had the same. Or whatever. Thing. It's just like it, the whole thing's fucked. But I'm, more importantly, I'm saying Corrupt. they could just be like, hey, we want to make all of America think that being fucking morbidly obese is. They're a good doing thing. that. Go viral. Go and viral. Then, and then all, and then boom, and then this chick's fucking the face of health in America. Or something. They are. They're making all these. Yeah. They're they, anytime they see like a big person, they they just make them go viral. Heat yeah. Up. Yeah. Heat her up. Kind of like NBA Jam. He's on I think fire. they are. That, that you know, everyone always talks about how they're sending you know like smut dances instead of like math or whatever. Yeah. Or, or, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. The in chi- how it's different in China than here. But yeah. the, no one even really talks about probably how much they're sending. Like you know what I mean? Like anyone that's just like you should cut your dick off. They're like heat it up. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I mean, there's like oh fucking morbidly obese influencer. Heat it up! Yeah, someone being like we're all birds now. You know what I mean? My my head is nineteen birds, and if you really want to be cool, you should also think that you're crazy. Heat her up. I mean, don't get me wrong. I am a free markets guy, but there's something well, that's in my not free, free market. But though. that's what I'm saying. There's something in my like free market brain that goes like something's going on here. That's not like like some so, not to make a pun here, but someone's putting something on the scale. You know, they're tipping the scale one hundred percent. Yeah, you're not. I'll tell you what. When they talk about the you know, whatever that law is that, you know, uh, rule 109 or whatever it is, you know what I mean? Where they get to be kicking a- out the Jews. <laughs> no, they're a oh. aggregator and they're not like a publisher. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Section two thirty. Yeah. But it's like, you want to talk about tipping the scales. Like you go, you're legitimately heating stuff up like that. Yeah. And they are, they're really, you know, again, people have made this point, but I feel like in the context, they're not really realizing the extent to which they're heating up all this other weird stuff. Like a That's guy what that, I'm saying. Because yeah. again, you know, you see some girl who's just like shaking her ass and she's hot and you go, I get why this is I going viral. I get why they're heating that up. Yeah. Not, I don't even get why this, why they're heating this up. I get, get why, why it's going viral. Popular. And yeah, you can say it's good or bad or whatever, but it's another thing you'd be like, you know, China's uh, heating up like, uh, yeah, like... Oh yeah, you never should eat a vegetable again in your life. Heat it up! Like that's the thing. They have 150 million uh, American users of TikTok. That's what they say. That's the current number. So you're like, they can make anything viral. It's like if you say, I'm going to show this person to every person in America. Yeah, yeah you're going to make it hugely popular. But the question is, is like, would it have been popular without it? No, no, I don't think so. No, so they're heating up some weird stuff. Yeah, but it is the body positivity. Hey, stuff CCP, going. we're coming for you. We're on you. We're on you, this malarkey. Oh, uh, CCP doesn't think that we've got their number. You know what no, I mean? No, no, Boy Scouts got the CCP. That's going to be me pretty soon. I'm going to be one of the people in those hearings, and I'm going to make a guest hearing, and I'm going to be like, "So, what about this heating button?" And be like, "We don't have it." I'll be like, it's so, "We, we so, kind of so. got one of the dogs in there. You know that, right? Who's in there? One of one of our patrons is is like one of the dudes." What? You don't know this? I think you hung out with him in Boston. I'm not going to give away too much information, but I was talking to him. He's like in the hearings, the TikTok hearings. He was one of the guys in the background. How did you know that? Because he messaged me. Oh, I didn't you get know. a message I, about I, that, I don't think. I, I mean, you, I'm pretty sure you hung out with him in Boston. But I just saying I didn't know that I was that he was in the TikTok hearings. Yeah, he's like, he's like they were briefing all the people. And I'm not going to give his name or whatever, but he's like, they were briefing all the, they were like run, and he said we were doing like the, the um, practice like uh, briefings or whatever, and he was the guy pretending to be the CEO. That's of awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of the dogs. That rules. One of the one of the boys. So dogs. we have someone in there. Ask him about the heating up button. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. We we could we could, Ex- we could ask him to. Well, you go, okay. I think if you're running over, a free but. market, riddle me this. Yeah. Well, that they already admitted. Now the question is, with all the trash talk we've done on the CCP, would you go like Bology style, where like if you got a like a uh, your agent was like, hey, they want to do a. Uh, a big show in Beijing. Not a chance. You're like, no. No way. Right now, if they were like, I would say it's a trap. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You'd be too worried. I'd, right? They'd tune me up Gwyneth Paltrow style. Yeah, you just get disappeared. I don't think I'd want to go to China right now. I, I would be a little worried about China it. China is actually pretty cool. Country. That's what, yeah, Balaji was a little freaked out about going on there because he was said some not kind words about the Chinese well, government. Talks, yeah, I talked a lot of shit about the Chinese government. <laughs> and he was, he was actually stressed out about <laughs> yeah, going yeah. there. Yeah, I know. Okay, so another one. There's a third one in sort of that same vein, but probably my favorite thing is uh, so Levi's basically, you know, have diversities all the rage. You've heard this. Yes, you heard of this diversity. You heard of <laughs> diversity stuffs in the news this week. <laughs> We're saying that being like, you heard of this? No, actually, has anyone heard of this? I, I haven't heard of it. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> 
Diversity is in the news. Have you heard of this stuff? Diversity? This... No, seriously. Has anyone heard of this? I've been in a bunker for the last 10 I years. Don't I know really about don't diversity. know what it is. This but, actually, I like this story. This, this is it's incredible. This makes me happy. So Levi's is going to supplement their human models with AI generated fakes. And <laughs> so basically they're firing a bunch of people. Yeah. And then they're coming back and they go, hey, look, we have AI generated black models. And they're patting <laughs> themselves on their back and they're saying it's a diversity win. Dude, honest, by it's the way, though. So fucking funny, though. Truck driver. Drivers are just must be laughing their fucking asses off at this. <laughs> Six months ago, they're like, "Oh yeah, you thought our jobs were at stake? There's no more models anymore." And as it should, that's be. one of the biggest like switches with all of this AI stuff or whatever. It was like it really is killing the jobs, the different jobs than you thought was gonna get killed for you know? sure, and so fast. Like again, yeah, like why do you need a model for like especially for print? Like it's yeah. not a runway model. No, I remember three years ago, it was the bloggers. It's all the like learn to code stuff or whatever. Yeah. And then it was like, who would have thought that it was their jobs that would all No, get... the best part is these truckers are like, we did learn to code and we replaced the bloggers. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like that, bloggers? <laughs> Such a huge move, though, to be like, you know, imagine like on our podcast, we were on like a real network and then they were like, you don't have enough girls. And then we're like, oh, what do you mean? We have this cartoon girl. <laughs> like, like legitimately, you just put like, a, <laughs> that's not true. We have an AI female voice. That's yeah. a huge diversity win. Yeah. Good job, women. Mm, good for you. <laughs> After, actually, you're like, this comedy showcase doesn't have any female females on it. You go. Actually, it has four white guys, <laughs> and then it has three AI female comedians. <laughs> AI female joke. Good bots. work, girls. Look at you guys, women, doing it right. <laughs> like, <laughs> yo, giving their diversity. Ah, uh, shit. And I mean, I think they're. That's the thing. The they're balls. Just, yeah, they just go. Oh, you know, we'll have all these diverse people, but at the end of the day, they're just like, yeah. We don't need models. They turned a story of like, we're actually firing a bunch of black yeah. people to like, we're probably doing the most sure. for black people. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I don't really see why this is a scandal. Like, uh, I don't know only it's a scandal. Not a scandal, but I think people are supposed to, are trying to make this out like this is such a bad thing. You're like, I guess it's bad for models. Well, it's sort of changed. That, this is the, the thing. So this is where... It's, it's really coming to a head the truth about all these things. Like, you know how we know so many friends that'll be like, they need like, you know, we need more women in this thing or we need more of this in this thing. And the reason for that is so kids can like look up into that movie and be aspirational, right? Yeah, yeah of course. But when you lo and behold, what a lot of it is, is like, I want that job, right? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sure. really, so, but then, but they're not going to say that. So they're like, you know, kids need to say that. And you go, well... If we're talking about kids should be able to look up and see themselves on this thing, so why would this not solve that? And they're like, exactly, yeah, that totally fucks them up. Well, more importantly, they're just like, hey, kids, don't aspire to be a model because there's no such thing anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what. It Sorry, is. It sucks. <laughs> But like I don't, you know, how everyone became a before model. Of course, before modeling <laughs> used AI. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't even know really what the gripe is, other than like. They're like, Levi's is bad. They haven't figured out what their gripe is. They know they don't like it. Yeah. But now they have to figure out why. So they're coming, they're grasping at straws, but they're not really sticking. Yeah. Like, I, but I imagine, like, you know, will white, like, will white people even, because, you know, some people, well, they'll be like, oh, look, there's like no white people in ads anymore. And you're like, well, those aren't people. <laughs> they're not so, people. So, like, do you even care? Who gives a shit? Yeah. Like, who even gives a shit? Because you're like, sure, they're not white, but they're not people either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're. <laughs> <laughs> All sorts of interesting dilemmas coming. coming no, it's, it's the best. It's as good well, as it gets. Yeah, until they come from, until two weeks from now when they're like, they came for podcasting. Well, <laughs> they've tried, but I mean, yeah, I'll tell yeah, you I'm what, not, Danny, I'm not, I'm not. and I know that we're not going through AI uh, stuff, but I'll just tell you one thing. Yeah, and we're not because you know, obviously, I argued a bit with Screlly on this. Yeah. What, this is what AI said. What is the funniest joke in the world? Humor is subjective, but it's difficult to say what the funniest joke in the world is. Different things people find different funny. But here is one joke that I as often cited as the funniest. Why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Oh, that's the funniest joke in the world. And I you mean, know South what? Park already covered this with the funny part. And you know what they said the least funny joke in the world is? Why did the chicken cross the road to get to the other side? That that's just, says the least that, funny that joke. That premise. Well, I don't see that as the least funny joke. And this is the why was six afraid of seven because seven eight nine is often cited as the funniest joke. Who cites in the world. that? I've never. I've 
I know comedy pretty well. I've never heard that. AI <laughs> is stupid. Yeah, for now. So that's that. Uh, so <clears throat> we'd also like to apologize for doing digital blackface. I know that was a big topic yeah. of the week. And if you don't know, digital blackface is when me and Danny did blackface multiple times and then posted it on the internet. <laughs> That's people saying that like everyone getting mad at everyone being like this digital blackface thing. You know, it's when you use emojis and you're like, "Ooh, that was digital oh. blackface." Because I, yeah, uh, I was sure digital blackface is when I took a picture of me doing blackface with a digital camera. <laughs> Ted Danson and I would like to have a word. <laughs> well, the thing with the models, the, the the diverse models or whatever, and this is the same thing with. There's obviously positives and negatives of. Um, you know, you know, you people will sort of talk about, you know, when you're dealing with like, there's a, there's a thing with like, uh, even like a black white thing or whatever, like someone, a lot of people have kind of made the observation that like, why do, um, that like when a black guy d like does something bad, it like a, all black guys have to, you know, take the credit for it sort of thing. Yeah. It's stereotyping. Yeah. Well, yeah. You go, oh, black okay. guy. Yeah, when a white guy kills someone, it's just a person killing someone. But when a black guy kills someone, they go, oh, black. Well, that's yeah. the sort of... And the argument is the the actual... I mean, it's kind of becoming less and less true. Obviously, now when a white guy does something bad, people are pretty into pointing that out. Sure. But more so, it is sort of like a byproduct of like diversity stuff is like... Yes, you celebrate. Like, if you're a woman, you get to celebrate when a woman did something positive. That's a win for women. But if you're going to take that, then you're also going to get the bad ones. That's really the thing. Which is fair. Like, I'll say, I'll, I'll tell you a woman comedy thing that Corinne will bring up, which I actually agree with. When there's a really bad woman comedian, everyone will watch that and be like, fucking women comedians. Yeah, yeah But course. no one really watches a guy comedian that sucks and says, like, fucking Well, it has to do with comedy. the majority. Uh, it has to do with whoever is the majority. Because when you're the majority, it doesn't make sense. It makes less sense when someone's, like, a larger piece of the pie to say, like, oh, a bad male comedian when everybody knows that comedians are still, like, 80% male to be like, oh, one bad comedian male comedian they're all bad whereas yes. it makes more sense from a, just a, like a pure race that's sort of a part of it same with the race i'm not saying that i'm stuff. not saying that doesn't isn't a part of it but more so that it's just people are aware of this stuff sure. right yeah so people course. are aware of diversity hires or whatever so it's like if you say if you see a girl on this thing people's brain and she's not good people's brains are a little wired to be like oh she only got it of because course. girls are getting forced out of throat. course yeah of course right yeah so, same with all that stuff yeah so it's like yes it helps which is a tough spot to be honest like for the people who are those people because like a lot of times like you know it used to be where it was like so unfair in the other direction yeah. so they had to do this like basically over correction which is what's happening now essentially but i'm sort of positing the diversity essentially in general basically takes your group and now you operate like a union so yeah. to speak yeah. right so if you're in the, if you're it helps a few people like for example in like the acting unions right like what happens is if you get in the union they'll give you more money but obviously less people get in the union you know what i mean yeah so that's kind of how it operates for this right it's like if you are like women it's sort of it takes it collectively bargains a better deal for the few women to get these of, spots of course but yeah it doesn't help everybody no, what well, hurts it hurts, it hurts some yeah, people yeah 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 of course for sure so i yeah basically like unionization sort of hurts people and like if you're basically anything right it like helps some people if, if you hand it yeah, if you, once you get in if you're... you get into the positives and collect on them yeah. that helps you but if you can't if you can't man finagle your way into those positives yeah like the modeling thing if we're gonna oh we're gonna have more of this if you end up being one of the people that gets that it helps you but if you're not one of the people that gets that it kind of hurts you a yeah. little bit and it doesn't even help you if, i remember like with at least for acting like in in canada like everybody's like oh once you get into actro and sometimes you they force you to go in once you've done a certain amount of things uh -huh. and then people are like yeah once i got my union thing i'm like i stopped getting anything well because any now roles. you're twice as expensive you're right? exactly well, that's what i'm saying but it's like it was one of those things where people are like yeah like you think you want to become a union actor and then there's like actually it sucks now because maybe you go out for cooler things but you're like i work way less yeah and it depends on the industry i'm sure that there's a million but if you're like a union like in a factory or something it's for sure better it's sure better but there is industries that are smaller where it'd be like hey i'm a union guy now it's like well i can't technically go like you know you have to, I mean, you could do it illegally under the table, but like there is a thing when you're in these, a lot of unions, once you're in them, you can't just go do a separate like job. No, that was like a, literally the acting thing was. Yeah, you, it's just what well, they're you're all You're like, hey, I want to go like shoot us like the sketches we do. 
like just like you know we dick around but two three of us yeah or whatever and then you like get a call from like the sat actor being like hey was that like a Nuts. union shoot and you're like it's a sketch on instagram fuck are you talking about there was a li- and they're like you can't do that there was a literal <laughs> moment in time where they were trying to figure out what to do with digital and you if you were in the acting union and your buddy was like literally making an instagram video they'd call and be like time to pay the piper yeah yeah they're like hey you owe us like fees or and like, you're just and like, you're like what and you're just like, you are so, be- you, if you're going to tell your friggin' actors that every time they want to make a YouTube video, and a lot of people that in these acting unions are so whipped that if they get told what to do, they go, okay. Yeah, for sure. Well, they I mean, some of them are ma- do make money and they're like, I don't want to get kicked out of the the union. But like, it was like that for a minute where you're like, yeah, I like, can't, I, I can't do like a short film with my friends or like a short <laughs> It's so funny. I'm going to take another quick second here to tell our fellas about a partner of ours called Z-Biotics. And listen, if you ever skipped a workout because you got too many drinks the night before, guilty as charged. DP is guilty. I'm guilty. Oh, yeah. But if you're committed to a healthy routine this year, you're going to want Z-Biotics. Nowadays, when I drink alcohol, listen, guilty as charged, like I said, second time I've mentioned that I'm guilty. guilty. I'm a guilty Take man. Take him away. I'm a guilty man. Lock me up and throw away the key, but I don't bounce back the way that maybe I used to. So you might find yourself in a situation where you can't drink, you know, have a couple drinks even at dinner potentially because you know it's going to hit you hard the next day. You might end up skipping plans altogether if you got a big day. That is until me personally, I found Z-Biotics. We all got busy lives these days and we can't afford to waste a day stuck on the couch just because of a few drinks the night before. Z-Biotics is the answer we've all been looking for. Z-Biotics pre-alcoholic probiotic is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Contrary to what some people might think. Z-Biotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but in your gut where you need it most. Just remember to drink Z-Biotics the night before drinking alcohol and also drink responsibly. You know, this is something. Of course. You got, you got to say it when you're doing a read. And you get a good night's sleep to feel your best tomorrow. First time I tried Z-Biotics was the night I was at shows the night before and I had to get up crazy early for an airplane. So as instructed, I drank a bottle of Z-Biotics before any alcohol. I was amazed at how good I felt the next day. So give Z-Biotics a try for yourself. You go to zbiotics.com. That's Z-B-I-O-T-I-C-S dot com slash boyscast to get 15% off your first order when you use the code boyscast at checkout. Z-Biotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund the money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash boyscast and use the code boyscast at checkout for 15% off. If there's one thing worth giving a try, it's this. So thanks to Z-Biotics for sponsoring this episode. I'm going to take a tiny break here to tell the fellas that we might be interested in you. So right now, Boys Cast is looking for a super producer in the New York area, someone that understands cameras, someone that understands the internet, making thumbnails, you know, blah, 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 blah. We got All the pr- stuff. You know it. You, you know what if, it is. If you're the person, you know what Yeah, we don't need about. to really tell you what it is, but if you're in the New York area and you're a producer, we're looking to add someone to the team that potentially can help with a lot of different stuff, yeah. you know, so. Take the, take the Boys Cast to the next level. Hit it at the Boys Cast with Ryan Long at gmail.com with, uh, you know, pitch whatever, why you think you might be good and uh and then we'll see where that leads or if you know someone let them know or hit me up on you know in the patreon or the instagram or twitter or whatever yeah all right peace so speaking of the i don't know if you, the the transgender stuff's been all the rave this week i don't know if you saw that i did see that big win for uh, diversity i would say <laughs> that is a big win for diversity that is representation matters also white guys at it again White guys can't stop. White guys just cannot stop shooting up schools. Shooting up schools does happen a lot, and it happens only by white guys. White guys. I mean, this was a white guy <clears throat> who did it. It is sort of a weird thing because, like, the uh, it, it, on this one, it's interesting seeing people, like, scramble for positions. and people. This is a tough it. positioning one. This is one <laughs> yeah. of the hardest. A lot of people are just ones. doing the opposite of what they were. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, the people on the right are like, do we want... 
Uh, they're sort of saying mentally ill people shouldn't have guns. Yeah, anymore. and then they're like, yeah, exactly. Where they're like before, they're like, no, we can get guns, whatever. And then that's the like, yeah, stupid should. ones. You, yeah, you find out that no one cares about being consistent. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of trans groups that are like, I mean, that's what happens when they're treated bad. Yeah, like, for sure. You know, hate has con. There was that one trans group. Was like, hate has con. Hate has consequences. And you're just like, okay, well, did you feel that about like the last bunch of shooters? Yes. Yeah, is, is this the war you want to start? It's honestly, you're like pro shooter. Like, it really is watching people like sort of scramble around for like, yeah, you're okay. But you're like, what did you feel that way about the, the the last guy's manifesto? Nope. Okay, so yeah. Nope. It's also just crazy at any time, like taking the shooter side when they killed a bunch of kids. Yeah. I'm crazy. And but like, hey, this is what happens. There was um, there was a, a the trans person that was like went pretty viral because they kept saying that um. They basically went to the TSA agent. They said the TSA agent punch, punched them in the balls. Do you see that? Yep. So I don't. <laughs> I feel like it I was trying to figure out what punch. happened in this story because basically, it, I have a decent idea. If I'll, I, t- if, well, little, I'll tell you what, I went through TSA last weekend and I get stopped a lot, and I don't know why. It might be because the balls are big. Yeah. I swear, sagging pants doesn't help either. I know. I try to put them up, but it's like, dude, I, don't, I had a fucking I'm always legitimately the last time when I came back from Florida. I went through and I can't remember why. Maybe I had a oh I had a belt on and they told me that I could leave my belt on and then I went through and then it like went off. And the guy's like, "Oh, your belt on." He's like, "I gotta like," uh, and he literally like put it. He's like, "I gotta like you know check you out or whatever." And like legitimately was rubbing the back of his hand on my balls and stuff. Like just, uh, buddy, this is that's crazy. what happened to me. I what, what did your guy look like? Like I don't know, hot. Did he kiss you on the lips first? <laughs> He's just a hot dude. I don't remember. I'm that. with this dude. He's 70 year old, like Jamaican man. This guy was giving me a hand job, basically. <laughs> yeah, he uses the back of his hand, but it's like, it's it's nuts. Yeah. And he's like, you want a private room? And you're like, Pri- yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you I offered do- me the private room. That's too. the last thing I want. <laughs> Is for you to take me to your fucking private room. Sure. God knows what's going to happen there. <laughs> like no, that, whatever yeah. you do, you do out in the open. <laughs> That's the absolute last thing I want is for you to bring me to a private room, pal. Yeah, private I'm, room. I'm fucking crazy up there. <laughs> do you want a private room? Extra 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. This psychopath, it's... I've, 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 like, legitimately... He was... He probably did four or five, like, gropes on my balls. Yeah, yeah. But I think what happened with the girl is she was doing this and she saw a penis and she goes, what the hell? And she goes, well, yeah, I, we're going to guess it wasn't a punch, but I'm going to guess what happened is that they went through the TSA thing as a woman because it's a trans woman. And then they go, looks like you're hiding something there. Yeah. And then she's like, I'm a woman. And they go, okay, well, there's something there. And she goes, yeah, there's I'm not. Something. My big old gog That's what I'm saying. But she's like, I'm a woman. That's just my vagina. Because I'm a woman, and they go, well, there's something exactly. There, so we're gonna have to look into it further, and then that's obviously like, that the point where if you were the person, if you're like any brain, just be like, oh, by the way, I'm trans, right? But their whole thing is they're like, oh, yes, I'm trans, but superseding trans is that I'm a woman. I know. So they're just like, I'm a woman, and then I live my life as a woman. So then when I go through TSA, I'm a woman. But they're like, okay, but there's something there that yeah. came up on the thing. She's so like, we have yes, to go my vagina. So they have to go investigate. And she's probably like, there's nothing there. And they go, well, there's, we think there's you're concealing something. And then, and they go, so we're gonna have to check. Who <laughs> Do you think they did how you can? I think they probably did the same. Well, then she sort of what the thing was. She sort of like started crying and she like ran to the bathroom. And now they're like. Okay, now she's like running to flush something or whatever. Right, you know like what I mean? the whole thing is, and she's just like, yeah, I don't like want to have my like genitals inspected. But you're like, everybody has to deal with that. You, I guess, what's the like? Really, there is no solution of this. There I is guess, a solution. It's called the train. Well, their solution is that, like, obviously, well, their solution is going to be, hey. Males and females have to have their penises inspected, like at all. You know what I, I mean? mean? Look, if you're a woman, and like I'm sure, if you're a f- biological woman, if you're you passing, have a bunch of stuff in your tucked in your underwear, it's gonna trigger the thing, and they're gonna be like, "What's going on down there?" You have to sort of whisper the whisper to the guy. So the guy brings you back, and he's like, "You know, to the girls." Oh. Because you get the girl to the girl and the guy to the yeah, guy, that, right? Yeah. So the girl's not expecting to get a fucking hog, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. This is her That's first probably time why. She probably did, like, I do the pat down where it's going to be, like, smooth. Smooth pat down. And then she goes like, dish, and, like, it just, it connected. You have to you. whisper Sooner in her ear. Earlier. I think you was once the girl's there. She's, you know, you know, a little pat down. You go, just so you know, I got a fucking pee 
peace. Yeah, but the, but if I you're trans, the moment me. you have to do that, then it's like kind of you're like, why a, do I have to do this? It takes something away from the fact that you're like, a, like the moment you have to be like, hey, I have a penis, then you're like, I feel like you're a little less. Trans I guess you have to be like, there's the wiener inspector and then there's the vag inspector, right? Yeah. And then if you're a girl, even if you're a girl and you've got the penis, you have to go to the wiener inspection. But then they're like, well, you when you're a trans, <laughs> and they should well, have like they got you a wiener hat on, stuff just like, that. like the basically basically what happens is there should be a guy with a big taco suit and then a guy with a big wiener suit right <laughs> they should have novelty suits just to make it a little funner just to make it funner and then you walk over to whatever one you go the guy's in the big wiener suit and he's like hey okay ready for your wiener inspection and he goes yeah and he spits on his hand. What about just like you should be able to take with you whatever you can carry in that area whatever you want to smuggle just in the in the pants like just like whatever in, in the smuggle. tidy whitey area <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, and anything like, under, the, like if you can get it in there, that's yours to take. Anything under a wiener. Well, in your case, if we did, if we used your wiener as the uh, the size wise. I guess anyone can bring a grain of sand in. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you just like whatever you can fit. That's not like super obvious down there. Uh -huh. You should be able to. I mean, that's a, unfair though. Why do you get to bring more a, stuff than me? <laughs> unless you had a massive hog. That is also we don't know the situation. Speaking of massive hogs, you seen this one? You seen this? <laughs> you seen this? <laughs> <laughs> See Me and Danny's chicks have been writing articles. <laughs> my husband's big penis has been destroying my sex life. <laughs> I don't even know what to After do. repeated injuries, I'm afraid of penetration, but I'm embarrassed to talk to my doctor. <laughs> but I'm not embarrassed to write the article about it. Yeah, you're not about. embarrassed to write a whole article. It's just definitely that. That's such a friggin'. Uh, you uh, almost like you gr article you make your girlfriend right <laughs> Seriously. You're like, what? Uh, how good would it be, though, if you got to be like. You post this on Instagram being like, my girlfriend just got her first article published. Hey, congrats, everybody. We're going out for drinks tonight. <laughs> You'd be the most supportive boyfriend. Yeah. Just wanted to say to everyone, like, you know, my girlfriend, she works really hard at this whole writing thing. Just, you know, just anyone reshare this article. <laughs> <as a> person, <laughs> my husband's penis is too big. It's literally destroying <laughs> my insides. Jeez. All you guys, anyone who knows me knows that I'm supporting of women and I'm supporting of women writing stuff. You know, you know, she worked really hard in this article, slaved away on it. So if anyone could repose this, you're just, <laughs> my, my boyfriend's penis so is hard. so big. That yeah, I don't know what to do. Know. Also, so big. I don't know what you do. Uh, uh, she says it's literally tearing. <laughs> Your, your girlfriend wrote that article, is yeah. it in yet? <laughs> My girl also wrote an article, is it in yet? <laughs> is it in <laughs> it's a crazy article, though. Actually, a perfect fit room for one more. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we could fit the balls inside, too. <laughs> yeah. Still room for the ball. Still room for the balls. <laughs> That's the title of the article. <laughs> I don't see why you can't. Dating Danny Polishuk. Still room for the balls. <laughs> <laughs> Still room for an extra set of balls. That's when you die. <laughs> That's the title of the biography she writes about you. Still room for the That's balls. The Danny Polishuk My eulogy. Room for balls. <laughs> room for balls. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. There's still room for the balls. The Danny Polishuk story. Is he freaking Chris Brown taking people's wives on that stage and then some dancing? Nerve. Speak, that's what I'm saying. Speaking of balls, <laughs> he does have some freaking nerve, eh? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. If you're a Chris Brown fan, I guess if you sit up, it's like Gallagher. It's just like if you sit up front, you're in the splash zone. You bring your girl to a freaking Chris Brown show, you know that Chris Brown's going to bring her on stage and give her a lap dance. Yeah, in front that's of the everything. thing, too. It's like the if ultimate you're, if you're a dude, you're just like, because I mean, the story is basically this guy brought his girl and then his girl got a lap dance from Chris Brown. It's just like, just don't get front row tickets. It's, the, for Chris Brown's out of control because, first of all, he's already got like a lot of smoke for all his stuff from before or whatever. He's, he's Teflon Brown, though. I know, Can't but he touched. keeps doing a new thing every time. I guess that's because he thinks he's so Teflon. But there's like, first of all, there's like 45 he stories is, of like someone takes a photo of him and he throws their fucking phone in a pond. Great, and he's zero repercussions. He's still selling out arenas. He did the same thing recently where a girl, yeah, you're right, he does have zero repercussions, but he's on stage and he's uh, giving a girl a lap dance and she's not paying enough attention because she's on her phone, then he takes her phone and throws it into the crowd. Really? Yeah, because, and then he's bringing people's girlfriends on stage and freaking giving them lap dances. Like, what show is this, Chris Brown? What I mean, are you doing? Yeah, I mean, again, if you're the, the least for if the you're boys the guy. dude, yeah, for sure. I don't think nobody has ever accused him of being for the boys, but Chris Brown sucks. Yeah, he stinks. But uh, yeah, if you're a dude and you want to surprise your girl with Chris Brown tickets, I'd say like sixth row, 
is fine. You want her in the bleeds, bro. No, I mean, whatever. If you want to be like, oh, I got you these crazy tickets, they don't have to be front row. You, If you're taking your girl out there to the Brown concert, you want her ba basically in the bleeds. Who's Mr. And Mr. Steal Your Girl? Not him. Uh, I can't remember. Derulo? Mr. Steal Your Girl? I can't remember who is actually. Mr. Like, who is actual? Or is, I don't know. Is that Nelly? Be a shaggy type guy. Maybe. Well, it's well, too it's much. Him. Well, it's him now. He's doing too much. Yeah, I agree. Chris Brown's a menace, and he needs to be stopped. A lot of the um, Red Pill guys would definitely hate the Chris Brown thing. For sure. I was watching a lot of them. There's the, a lot of Be clips. Being get into the Red Pill? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just saying a lot of <laughs> clips on the internet yeah, yeah. are about how you should have multiple wives and all this sort of stuff. And it's like, I honestly felt like an old man watching it where I was just like, legitimately, the only thing I was thinking was like, that would suck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. And, <laughs> <laughs> Works good on paper, but wait until <laughs> Christmas time. Do I actually feel like? Because and there's, there's a lot of guys that like do the logistics. It's like you know you need to have the means to fund those wives and this and that. Yeah. And then there's all these like videos of kind of like Muslim dudes talking about the mechanics of like having all these wives and like it's like no, no, it really is. I think one of the things that you forget is like a lot of these Muslim guys like. They're not happy campers. No, 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 no. no. Like they literally, they're, these they're guys just are doing God's will. That's why a lot of these guys here that they're like cab drivers or whatever. It's like they have to be on the phone nonstop because they have to freaking talk to all their wives. Is that why all they're on long. the phone all the time? I've, they're on some of them. Sometimes they're on. Or the phone they just chat with their body. Sometimes they like. Sometimes with I their wonder body. about that because like a lot of taxis, you get in there and they're just like, you look at their like a uh, phone or whatever. Yeah. And it's like they're on like a four hour call. <laughs> they never stop. Dude, yeah, they're just, they're just there's chat. nothing. They're like a bunch of just like gossipy teenage girls. It really is that chatting with your body. Like, can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, just like, I was like, so. I, but I do. I think that if they are with their body, but I think a lot of them are with their wife, dude. Oh, that sucks. It's crazy. That's even worse. Yes, your wife's like, oh, I'm opening the cabinet. I'm just gonna make some it's food like, right now, and you're like, okay, that sounds good. Yeah, it's like, do, okay. do you know where the, the rice is? He goes, uh, I think uh, it's probably this place where we always leave it. Oh, your other wife's getting on the phone here. Oh, oh, wife's... oh hi. Uh, how are you? Okay. She goes, you never talk to me anymore. It's like, okay, I'll try to make more time for you as well. <laughs> it's, it's. I'm telling you. It's, I mean, honestly, actually. It's, like, like, it's almost cliche to be what, like, it's, yeah, you think you'd have one wife, but I, dr I can't even please one wife. Yeah, it's like if you have four wives, driver's actually like a good job because you're like, I can kind of like talk to them each like a couple hours a day. Their only thing is they're kind of saying like they're 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 not these Western wives where like they're demanding attention or whatever. And it was like if you anyone I know that's like Indian or whatever, it's like the, those wives are if anything naggier a lot of times. Yeah. Well, I guess they're not. I don't know if it, do, in, do Indian people do multiple wives. No, Muslim I, I think is yeah, mostly yeah, Muslim, yeah. but a lot of Muslims in India. But I, I don't know exactly who's doing it, but some people are doing it. But I think it, you got to be sort of rich or whatever. Yeah. The idea is you're so rich that you bear like you don't really do much for them. You just sort of give them money and then you bang them every now and then. Mm -hmm. But it's like, why is it a plus that they live in your house? Yeah, I don't know about that. I feel like if you have lots of money and you want to have multiple families, then you just do like the like where you just, you know, have the family quick divorce on to the new one. You want to see a toxic king right now? Yeah. This is the toxic king. Put a finger down if the Miami-Dade Police Department calls you and tells you that they have recovered your husband's body and he is dead by apparent suicide. That your husband is not only alive, but he is living in Mexico with his mistress of six years. <laughs> Good for him. Good for him. <laughs> a lot of cheating. But wait, I thought they found his body. No, no. Uh, he somehow faked his death and then basically- Dude, that's an un underrated skill. In, in 2023. I don't know how we pulled it off. Faking yeah. your own death, man. Like, once you get that death certificate printed up. How do you do it? Scott, you're... Like, I've tried to figure it out how this guy got away with it, but what are some of the ways you might get away with that? Uh, well, you have to do some sort of scenario where they don't recover the body. Don't recover the body. But then the thing is, then you need new papers. Yeah, right? but he just goes to it. No, he has his same papers in Mexico, but they're not... Like, these places don't talk very much, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, I guess. Well, how do you cross the... Yeah, I guess you could probably just, like, walk into Mexico. Who knows how he gets there, yeah. but it was basically a bit toxic move that, like, instead of breaking... He faked his death instead of breaking up, but, like, I was watching. There's a lot of these, like, channels that are responding to that, and then there's, like, a big, uh, big uh, sect of YouTube where it's, like, that stuff like that, and then it basically cuts to, like, a fucking hood dude being, like, yo, but you honestly gotta think, what she be doing that this man be faking his own death? We want to look at this man 
who be faking his death. But what you not taking into account <laughs> is what is a woman doing to drive a man to a situation where he be faking his death. And you're oh, all yeah. like, yeah, you yeah, tell him. Yeah, you tell him. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, it's it's the thing is sometimes people think but honestly for real though. But that's the thing. A lot of people sometimes think you know the only way out of a bad situation is killing themselves. What they don't realize is that fake killing yourself is also a way out. I think it'd be so hard to pull off, dude. Well, you need some sort of like, you know, driving off of a bridge like uh, or unrecoverable body. I mean, you know what? It is, but it isn't. Because, Drive the car off Because people bridge. always do it, but then you're like, it's so easy. Just go find like 500 articles about someone dying where the body wasn't recovered never recovered and then just do that what's an example of that though why, why do they die when the body's not recovered you exploded uh no uh, maybe you go hiking and you never come back and they can't find your body oh and you get pronounced Snow, dead. maybe like an avalanche avalanche is like bang oh good one yeah you go skiing and then you're never found yeah that, that's you're thinking yeah it's good work. never found you go you go you go but yeah basically hey you tell everyone in your life hey i'm going to this like super Cam dangerous I mean, thing. camping i'm going white rotter rafting yeah and then they find the then they find but you got to make boat. sure that, but the thing is they will go look for the body but they don't find it yeah they don't find it but they're bit you eventually they're going to pronounce you dead yeah and the thing is realistically you have a bit of time to scram Mm -hmm. Right, but the thing is, again, it's like you know, you gotta. This is a. This is a. Move. You have to really plan this out, though, because you can't just go like. You can't go on the, the airplane with your new passport. You gotta. Get well, it. no, you can with a fake one, but then you get risk getting in trouble. But also, you can't just like empty your bank account a week before. There's you got so much planning goes yeah, into. Yeah, you gotta like you gotta probably plan this out for like a couple of years. Yeah, I think so. Leading up to faking your own death. Whereas I think faking your own. But death even still, though, if you go to a country where they can't expedite you, who cares if you're like on the hook for some shit? Uh, but you're right though. If you, the problem is yeah. that you go, oh, he's dead, and you go, yeah, but a week ago he took out all his money. You go, okay, well, he's, well, he's not dead. Yeah, he's yeah, not I'm dead. Yeah, yeah, there's always, there's always these things. No death certificate, pal. Yeah. Stick with the old wife. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, you obviously have fake documents, but this is probably so. There, uh, there's a lot of articles that be like, you know what I mean? I put on weight, and my fucking idiot husband like doesn't like me anymore, uh -huh. kind of thing, right? But this is where one where I was saying it's you're pushing it. My husband left me after I started growing facial hair. I now love it and refuse to shave. <laughs> so take that. <laughs> I mean, she... I would say that might be, you know, you go, listen, your wife put on 10 pounds. She was going through a stressful time. You're being an asshole about this. You know what I mean? She got a bad haircut. You're <laughs> yeah, being yeah, an yeah. asshole. Just she's doing all these things. This is you being an asshole. You need to stick by her in this thing. You go. Full beards pushing it. This is pushing it. She, you know what she looks like, by the way. She just looks like a trans man. That's the worst part about and being the, a bearded the, lady. Now it's like you can't just be. You can't remember the good old days. You could just be, be a, be a be bearded lady. Just join the circus. Now you have join a the circus. Long career. You go. I'm a bearded lady in the circus. You go to the circus now. They go. I mean, you be, I, I see a man. Yeah, that's a good point. There, what, there is no yeah, yeah. What's step right up to see the man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? I because this is the a, amazing she's a, she's a, bearded man. She's in India, and so I am. So here's my this is my theory on this. Okay, so there's a lady. She's in India. She started growing facial hair. Her husband left her. My theory is that I don't think being trans is probably super popular in India, but she is trans, and so she just got on some tea. She just was like she got some testosterone. I don't think so. I think she has the disease where you grow the beard. I think that's just what she's saying. She just looks like she's on. So you think she's going trans? She's she's been uh, squeaking some American media. I mean, she's wearing a turban. Since when do women wear turbans? No, but yeah, she's going. She's gonna be like just live her life as a man now. Yeah. Yeah, she seems like she's living her life as a man. That would suck so much if you were like an Indian dude. You know, that's the equivalent of like you catch your you know someone watching porn and you're like, what are you doing watching this? You know what I mean? Or like, like that's a trans man. Yeah. Basically now, yeah. Like I'm like, but, but I you, think the beard's real. But you're real. adopting the clothes. Most of they could no. She used to have to shave her beard because she has a, one of those beard uh, diseases. All right. I think she's just sneaking in some tea. Do you think she's sneaky with the tea? Yeah, I think she's <laughs> sneaky with the tea. <laughs> that, what, your girlfriend's never had a beard. All of a sudden, you come home, you go, "What's this?" You go, oh, I'm "Some patches on my." Yeah, and, I, and then once the beard comes out, she's all of a sudden she's like, "Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna start living like a guy." Yeah, I just fucking pop the turban. Just because I mean, the beard's here, so I might as well. And the beard's already. I mean, here. I guess I could shave, but also I could just live like a guy. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't one, two options at this point. Okay, because I mean, like you do shave your legs and stuff, so it seems like it's not the craziest. Step thing. Step right up to see the bearded <laughs> man. 
The amazing man with a beard. The best is the video too. Is like all just beard care. Like the video that's <laughs> is like it's not like so. What's your life like? It's all just her like just sh- combing. She's her very beard. into the beard. Yeah, she's like she's like loves the beard. She's like a girl with a beard makes me like viscerally, viscerally like grossed out. Yeah, like something about that. Same thing that the armpit hair. Like something about the girl with a beard. Unless you go full like Buck Angel, where it actually like strikes me as a guy. Mm-hmm. If it looks like a girl and has a beard, like it, re- it like almost just it gives me like. What's well, the thing? Or is this like chick that. like looks like a dude? Like, there's nothing that looks like a chick here. Now she does, yeah. Now she does with the beard. Her husband suddenly, after she suddenly grew a mustache, her husband left her. Now she feels empowered. That's one of those things where your ex-girlfriend's like, yeah, well, you think that's bad? Now I have a full beard and I'm so empowered. And you were like, yeah, I know. You're just confirming that I made the right decision. I and think. she has, okay, so she has like, you know, the dagger that they have? That I thought that was for men. She has a dagger now. She, yeah, look, here, look, here's a photo with her and an, or him and another guy. He's trying to get a dagger. But they're Come both on, daggers wearing, for men. But look, they're both wearing turbans. She's going trans. Yeah, she's trans. And then there's a photo here with her and three other women, and she's wearing a turban, and they're all not. Ninety percent of the stories right now in the world are just like fucking people changing their gender. <laughs> I mean, it's wacky. It's a wacky thing to do. Oh, wacky! You got you got a dagger now. Come on. Channeling a newfound confidence, Man Deep now refuses to shave it and wears a fully grown beard with a turban. So, yeah, definitely you're right. I mean, and the name is Man Deep? Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't Woman Deep. It wasn't Woman Deep. That's <laughs> woman Deep's more like me and Danny. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> deep inside of Woman. Yeah. Woman Deep actually would be a sick name for an Indian dude. Yeah, Woman Deep. What do they call you? Fucking Man Deep? But you probably, that's more like you. I'm actually <laughs> Woman Deep. You're Man Deep. <laughs> Yeah, the dagger thing. I, I don't know uh, enough about their culture, so uh, you know I could be wrong. But I thought that 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 was for guys. The dagger. Dagger's I mean, da- carrying those. a dagger twenty four seven seems more like a guy thing than a chick. That's bro thing. shit, man. Yeah, all the bros get the sickest daggers in India. Yeah. Everyone knows that. That's you give yourself, you give your buddy a gift. What happens is everywhere they meet the two buddies and meet up on their birthday, you give him a gift of the dagger. He gives you a dagger and you just sort of exchange daggers. And then you know what? I have another gift for you. And then you exchange back and then you call yeah. it a day. You call it a you day. You both leave with your original daggers that you had. Okay, this is a trans man. And daggering, uh, that is when Jamaicans have a good time. <laughs> yeah, it says the farmer has also now taken to wearing a turban and is feeling less anguished over her facial hair. This is like probably Indian. That's actually who should be a ter- trans though. If you go, you're growing a full beard, you go, I might as well go trans at this point. Yeah, I something's something's up here. Well, you sort of are na- naturally practically a dude though because you that's not you making a decision. That's the world making that decision for you. Yeah. If you just randomly grew a big set of fucking double Ds, yeah. I wouldn't be like, "Oh, I'm deciding to go trans." You're like, "Nah, dude, yeah. like the world, the your world body decided. Your body decided. God decided. Your body saw what you've been up to and said, "No, nah, this is a woman." Yeah. Yeah, this uh, my, my guess here is that it's just like probably harder to be trans in India. They're behind on all this stuff, and then they're like, "Oh!" But that's what I was saying, though. I've started to grow a beard. If you, uh, if my you, husband doesn't like it, if you had kids or whatever, like, and you lived, if you're like Upper West Side CNN lady, probably the worst thing you could do is come down and watch your sons watching like Ben Shapiro or something. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? That's the biggest nightmare. But for like, I, pr- I bet you for a lot of like. Uh, your average person, like imagine you were like an Indian dad and you come home and your girl's getting into the blogs. Like, Ooh. you know, she's, you know, what is this? How'd you get like LGBTQ nation or whatever? She's reading pink news. Oh yeah. And and you're like, honey, grab the vat of acid. If you come home and you're an Indian dad and you come home, and your daughter's fucking poking around on pink news. And then you start coming, she comes home and she's wearing them like, a, you know, she's got a work vest on instead of her and a turban. Yeah. All of a sudden she's putting a turban on. She's making a toilet paper turban. You're like, <laughs> This is going to be problematic. Yeah. I wonder if that's like how trans like kids in India like express themselves. Because, you know, they'll be like, oh, I came home. And like, yeah, they do have wearing like dads. Turban. There's wearing dad's suits and stuff. Putting or mom's dresses. On. Oh, you'll take that off. That was a Chinese accent, I feel like. What? That was a Muslim. What? You, you take that off. That's all right. Okay, you do Muslim then, big boy. Muslims are religion, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, my Muslim is like a... I do uh, Mike Tyson. Okay, I do it. I can't do Mike Tyson. You can't do Mike Tyson? It's a pugilistic passion that I have in my defense. It's impregnable. All I can do is just lisp. The, I can do... Uh, uh, one thing that I do know how to do is my black... You know, my black 
intellectual and my white university professor are the exact same guy. Mm -hmm. So it is the tremographication <laughs> of the white man. He has, they, they, so they take a long time. This is my one accent that I'm good at is the taking a long time to say something that we all know what you're talking about. So yeah. they go, they, they go, listen, the tremographication of the white man. When we saw him, he was surrounded by people in the circle who had an affinity to this man and he also had an affinity to them back and they would put themselves in social situations where they enjoyed each other's company and you go oh got it they were friends they were friends yeah yeah, yeah. and then the, <laughs> the sam harris university the professor pa the pastor Shit. that's the sort of the black intellectual pastor and the white uh university professor does the same thing they go he was a man who was surrounded by those who had an affinity towards him while at the same time that affinity was reciprocated. And the manifestation of that would be them traveling to do, you know, for example, events where the two of them would be engaged in a social activity that would be enjoyed. So that's the, and yeah, you know, yeah, they have friends. They yeah. have friends, yeah. So that's the Sam Harris. Also, another thing I've decided... A uh, Patrick McDavid. This is a Patrick McDavid. Yeah. My Patrick McDavid is uh, everything's an anecdote. So no matter what they're arguing about, they go, okay, let, no, let me finish. Let me finish. No, let me see. Okay. Let's say you're a contractor and I hired you to do my <laughs> yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like breaking it down. <laughs> you're a contractor. I hired you to do my house. And he goes, I give you, I give you $20, right? You do, I, you, you go to do the work, da, 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 da. So you're supposed to do the work. Now I look, I come home. You didn't do any work. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, no, I still want my twenty dollars back. But you say, you know, but you gave me the twenty dollars. It's mine now. No, who is? You know, that's, that's yeah, and then the Federal Reserve starts, and they go, "We're going to lend out one hundred and forty dollars for this twenty dollars." You're like, "What?" It's pretty good, Patrick yeah, David, right? Yeah, da, da, da. Yeah. You know, da 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 da. You were saying this, da 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 da. And then yeah, so that's my Patrick with David. And then I was thinking about this, is. This is why it's hard to get a good read on, like when you're talking about AI stuff and this, and you know, things like that. It's hard to know who to trust because left wing people don't know what the fuck they're talking about, and right wing people are all biased. Yeah. So it's like all the tech guys who are probably pretty smart on so many problems, they're biased. It's kind of like the Silicon Valley Bank was that a little bit yeah, too, for right? Sure. Like you would listen to like a Sam Cedar or whatever, and you're just like, I feel like this guy just doesn't really know what he's talking about. You no, know what I mean? No, he's just like money's bad. Yeah. So you're like, and then all the billionaires are like, well, yeah, you like the do Young Turks. Yeah, like you listen to that. Young Turks or like people like that, and you're just like. Okay, I don't I don't think you even know like the basic theory of like what money is, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you listen to any of these other guys and you're like, they're all fucking talking about their friends, so they're biased. And the AI is a bit like that too, where you're like, all these people are like wrapped up in they have like investment in it. So it's like right wing guys a lot of times can't be trusted because they're too like it's like they're I mean, you just have to be conscious when you take anybody's like, you know, opinions on especially stuff like this. You're like just, you know where they're coming from with this they're they're not yeah. totally altruistic like i think i'm better I, you're you're probably better off like listening to the, like someone who kind of knows what they're talking about and like trying to parse out yeah like, for their sure bias. to just be like hey just so you know like they you know they're coming at this from the sense of like i don't want to lose four billion dollars yeah then just listening to someone who like under doesn't even understand like how fucking exactly the effect yeah, yeah, of yeah, a yeah. marginal tax rating yeah and they're just like all like yeah everything's bad and you're like okay well it's it's kind of a little simplistic well, it's not even that they it's not even that everything's bad with like some of these people. It's more that they like they just won't even like admit that you you go, you know, we should raise the minimum wage or whatever, right? And then you're like, okay, but like obviously, you know, there's positives and negatives to that. Like the positives are the one you're saying. Some of the negatives of doing that is obviously there'll be like less jobs and they'll be like, No, there won't be and you go, Okay, so you don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Or you luckily AR just replaced those people, so Came full circle. That person yeah, just got people, that. That person just got replaced by some of those Chad. people. Did get replaced? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I'm a stink. If you're one of these people who like actually has a job that's gonna like pretty lock be replaced, and you're like you may, you maybe started like you're 28 years old, you're just like kind of starting your career, and you're like yeah the job that I like. I'm and you like went to school for a long everything. time for like it. like some more your copywriting. Like imagine like nobody people do copywriting. That's you're true. like you are done. Yeah, like you're ten percent of you are going to be doing copywriting, that and stinks. and it's going to be you're going to be feeding prompts into AI and then editing it, and like ninety percent of people who do copywriting are like, yeah, your job's so obsolete. what can the what can the copywriter do instead? I don't know, not much. Is there any other Pretty jobs that skill? skill? Yeah, what's 
it's you're pretty right spe- pretty specific skill i like i mean i don't know where to translate to proofreading but like again it's all going to be done like proofreading is a bad adult job <laughs> whatever <laughs> but you're like also you're just going to copy the thing and paste it into an ai program and it's going to do the proofreading for you yeah like maybe some grammatic stuff i don't know i'm a female crane operator and men <laughs> stare at me constantly <laughs> <laughs> We're going to end off with a couple funny bangers. Yeah. But this girl, basically, she's a female crane operator, and she does a story about her men stare at her constantly. And then she was like, you know, I'm just a crane operator like anyone else. Yeah. You know, and I can't do my cranes without getting stared at. But then you look at the story, it's like her dad's a crane operator. She's 19 years old. She's smoking hot. Yeah. Like, what of the, she was like, I, you know, I never thought I'd be a crane operator, but I just love it. And you're like, do you just love it? Or is your dad giving you a summer job? For sure. And also, you're like, crane operator seems like... You need a lot of experience to yeah, be so a crane yeah, operator you're when you're 19. Smoking on 19-year-old girl, you're going to get some stares. By the way... But also, it's like a crane. How do you even see who's in the crane? Who, who's even she, operating? She's saying that she's getting stared at right and left. The co-workers no, are staring at her. No, what she's getting. She's getting just like a bunch of just good old dudes who are just yeah, like a good what, crane. Um, yeah, they just love <laughs> cranes. Yeah, they're just like guys who are... Dude, I was walking actually to the subway today, and there's construction happening <laughs> by my house and then there was like you, and you have like those wood like things up and I, it was so funny just seeing a guy walking by and then he just is like he just just couldn't help but just see what's going on he's just like looking he was probably looking through the fucking thing for two minutes <laughs> just, just looking at a good construction site you know <laughs> like he's got no skin in the game here he's just passing by he just likes, just, just yeah. likes to see a good construction site just a dude just <laughs> checking out some dude stuff yeah. But this is like, she's like, yeah, guys keep looking at the cranes. Like, guys like cranes. Well, that's one theory. My theory is more that fucking the, the foreman brought his smoking hot 19 year old like daughter yeah. and every guy's like, yeah, there yeah. hasn't been the only <laughs> hot girl I mean, that, on the ground the, for the, sure. The closest thing there's been to a woman on, you know, around them in years has been like, you know, Barb fucking Jim's <laughs> yeah, yeah, fat yeah, yeah. white br- dropped off his lunch one day. For sure. So they're all like, every guy's looking at her and they're all like, look at this because I'm a woman. They're <laughs> looking at me because I can't think you're doing the job. It's like, no, these friggin' perverts are looking at you because fucking Jim brought his hot wife to wo- his hot daughter to work. Work, you know what I mean? <laughs> You're also a hot 19 year old in a bright neon vest. <laughs> it's like it's literally it's kind of. But even more importantly than that, the, the story's so funny being like, just because I chose that I want to be a crane operator for the mess of my life. And you go, let's see when she's even 23 if you're still operating these cranes when you find out that you're. I feel like you need like, that's a job you need to be, you know. What percentage a lot of, of experience. What percentage of c- girls that become a crane operator for the next 30 years are over a seven? <laughs> Like what percentage of hot girls with the options? What percentage of crane operators are women? Period. Well, this, low this. But I'm saying those most of them probably aren't smoking. Hell no. <laughs> you want to see a solid comment from uh, the comments section yes. of this article? Yeah. Uh, this is from DT. It says she could handle my crane. <laughs> crane is uh, talking about his dick. Pasta freeze. Let's end with a fun <laughs> one too. <laughs> Regina's in a bit of a... <laughs> Regina's in the news. Regina's in the news. So Regina admits that they're... Too- Honestly, by the way, I did not <laughs> expect that this is where, like, when you looking at this link, and I was like... Regina admits that their tourism campaign was offensive and inappropriate. So basically, Regina is like just more so what you're talking about, just a good old boy working at Regina that hasn't been following all this stuff. <laughs> made Regina a bunch of, uh, th- made their tourism campaign a bunch of puns where Regina's vagina. Yeah. Or, or they, they're like diversity was so important. They've gone so, so far the other way that they go, yeah, because we know that diversity is so important. We hired a 10 year old boy to do our marketing campaign. <laughs> Because you're like, what? Tell me what you don't see working. We in want marketing. diversity of age. Diversity too. of age. We hired a ten year old. Experienced Regina tried to tap into some of the more unsavory attempts at humor, <laughs> namely the fact that it rhymes with vagina. Whereas vaginas are no laughing matter. You're no. not supposed to laugh at a woman ever. You're only supposed to laugh at a man's vagina. Yeah. So you're not even supposed to laugh at a man's vagina. I looked vagina. at this. I said, "Well, I never." <laughs> Is, that there, is, is there really a person who's offended by this? Probably. Like, well, there's two different people. There's the classic, probably just like your actual old lady that's just like, you shouldn't be making vagina jokes. And then there's the probably the new school college kid. And they are sort of, they stand side by side. 20-year-old college kid and 90-year-old nosy Parker church lady, <laughs> just hand in hand, not happy. 
So they said, show us your Regina is one of the. <laughs> Honestly, if you've ever been to Regina, not a lot going on there. I don't even really know what they could sell Regina for other than they have like the. They said the city's. Rough Riders. The city that rhymes with fun. And it fell flat with some of the residents is what they said. Yeah, well, this isn't for you. It's not for you. It's for people who are trying to come to Regina. Do you think there was anyone that worked on? And they said the city that rhymes with the uh, the city that rhymes with fun. And they go, yeah, I need some of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck, I love what about vaginas. just come to Regina? I love fucking Regina. I love Regina so much. I'm what about Regina? Regina? Come. Yeah, come in. A, yeah, you should come in Regina. <laughs> I mean, they're in a tough spot. Because fell flat with many residents. We are committed to involving more diverse stakeholder groups. <laughs> City that rhymes with vagina. Okay, I'm Regina a player. On the Patreon, I have a really all good thing right now. Uh, there was a. Uh, uh, there's basically like 15 articles about all these, uh, th all the girls that they're basically added another one in, uh, added a girl in to make their husband happy. And then there's just one guy that added this like big black dude <laughs> in his relationship. Yeah, got a bull. A big ball. But uh, among a million other things. But thank you all for subscribing to the Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash the boys cast. You already know what it is. We appreciate you more than anything. So we are going to put a lot of effort, time, and money. Yeah, we will. Go subscribe to my YouTube channel. And subscribe to Danny's YouTube channel. Peace.